Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to look at a mouse replacement, the Arola Mouse Red Mouse, which has been sent to me for review by my happy friends at a Contour Design. Now, I know what you're thinking, you're thinking that's a very large package to contain a mouse replacement, but it does contain a mouse replacement, so let's go and do an exciting unboxing. Right, let's get uh, into the parcel. Always good to get into a parcel. I think I'm going to use a uh, standing knife there to get in. There must be some clever way in here. Oh yes, there we are. Didn't take very long, did it? Let's just go wild on the older unwrapping. There we are. It doesn't want to come out. It's going to come out. This is very exciting, isn't it? I, I like an unboxing. It starts with a very good uh, getting it a thing. There we are. It's been uh, very well packed. Oh, lots of lovely bubble stuff there. We can uh, get great stress relief from bubbleness. Maybe I can use it to mend my foot. Probably can't, but uh, eventually we will get in here. And finally, I made a right pig's breakfast of that. Finally, I've got in to find the uh, the contour designed uh, roller mouse red. Oh, it flips up. Oh, what a what a lovely box that is. It's uh, sometimes you do an unboxing and it's just a, a normal box, but that is a that's a box and a half, isn't it? We've got some plastic under that. Beautiful box there, and um, there we are. The uh, the roller mouse red. So we have a little leaflet thing to tell us uh, about it. We have the uh, the roller mouse itself, which looks uh, very exciting. How do I get that out? There we are, look. This is our mouse replacement. I can take that out with its, its cord. The idea is, oh, it's got a lovely padded um, thing on there. So basically, this sits in front of your keyboard and you actually operate the mouse by rolling and moving this bar. So we've got that. We've got a little, uh, nice little leaflet. We've got uh, some things. I'm not quite sure what those things are, but we'll have a look there. Uber duber flexible. We'll have a look at those. Got another thing. There we are. And a, a third thing. A couple more things. Four, two more things. And a little key thing. I'm starting to think I might have to read the manual here to make sure I know how all this goes together. But there we are. That's the, the basis of unboxing of um, our roller mouse red. Right, I've now um, read the manual in, in, in some depth, and I understand that uh, these pieces here are uh, keyboard risers, because with the roller mouse, as you can obviously see, this is a, a, a keyboard rest, and so the keyboard is going to end up here. Uh, this is my keyboard, maybe a bit smaller than the one they intended, but it'll work perfectly well. Um, but this needs to be raised a bit to really work with uh, this device. So what you do is you can use these in various configurations. They can be uh, raised and lowered to give us a uh, different different heights. So I've got little things that flick up over there. So these are quite nice uh, adjustable pieces. And so what I'm going to do is what you're supposed to do, which is to take these things and this clips in like that. You can put these together all sorts of ways around, but that's the way I'm going to do it. And then these slot in the end of the roller mouse, if I can get them in while working upside down. There's, there's one, and then there's the other one, which I've already put the bits together. And that will slide down there, and we'll get it in roughly the right place for our keyboard to be. That wasn't a bad guess, was it? But a bit further along there, the keyboard would be would rest like that. So that's how you you roll the mouse actually sets up with your keyboard. Now, just worth pointing out, these have got lots of adjustment. As I said, you can take the uh, little things at the back up there. Maybe you can see that, we can just pick that up. That would make your keyboard slightly raised like that. Or you can raise your keyboard by pushing these up like that. So there's all sorts of options, but for me, I'm gonna take those down and uh, pull these forward, and I think that'll work 
perfectly well. So that's a, it's, it all reeks of quality, this. They've really thought about what they want to do and actually made it work. The other thing I think we should look at are the actual controls down here. We've actually got the rolling bit itself, which actually goes up and down. You can use that to control the mouse cursor and you can click with that. But in addition to that, we've got a standard left and right click buttons. We've also got a button for doing a double click with one button. So if you've got RSI or arthritis or something, that might be very, very handy for you. We've also got copy and paste buttons um, built in. We've got a button to control the features of this device. The roller mouse is an entirely plug and play device. There's no drivers to install. So all the actual settings on the device are controlled by its own internal firmware and systems. And finally here, we've got a, a really, really nice scroll wheel, one of the smoothest scroll wheels I've ever tried, and it's also clickable. So there we are, that's the Roller Mouse Red hardware, very interesting rodent type device. So let's now try connecting it to a computer. Okay, well, uh, here I am in Windows 10 and I'm controlling my mouse cursor with the Roller Mouse Red. As you can see, I'm moving the bar back and forth to go across the screen. I found it's most comfortable to do it using several fingers. Obviously, you can use just one, or you can use it with the fingers of either hand. You can keep flicking back and forth. But I find uh, a few things on that hand is the best. And when I roll it, you go up and down on the screen. It takes you a little while to get used to, but I have to admit, after a few minutes, I was doing this fairly easy. So I can now quite easily go in, click there, open up uh, a disk or something. Or, of course, I can use the... Uh, double click button to open something up. It works very nicely. Do that again, and you can very simply you know, select things. It's, it's very, very straightforward. If I show you in some different packages, if I go into, say, a word processor, it's very easy to go in and uh, highlight a, a word, or of course you can highlight with the, using the button down there. And it feels quite natural actually to sort of go across like that to select a piece of text, or of course you can select more text, and you can get to, oh, there's lots of text, or you can go to the menu and it works you know, very well indeed. You've got no problems using that in a word processor. If we go to a web browser, again, oh look, it's explaining computers. The latest video has just gone up. Raspberry Pi overclocking looks like people are, are watching that. And that works very nicely. But I don't have to, of course, use the uh, scroll on there. I can use a nice little scroll wheel down here and, of course, click around to get around the site. So it's obviously for, for, for web uses is very, very good. The one type of program I would struggle a bit using this is a graphics package, there's GIMP. So say I was going to draw a picture, I'll try and draw you a nice circular face there. That's not the best smiley face, is it? And a couple of little eyes over there, but I think probably a frowny face. This is not the mouse to use or the rodent replacement to use if you want to do a lot of graphics work. Having said that, you could use this in combination with a graphics tablet very nicely, so you could actually use the roller mouse for most of your mouse and then a tablet for that. So we'll do a um, undo paintbrush there and maybe still give him a smiley face. Yay! Final thing I want to point out is that you have got control of this. So if I wanted to make it more or less sensitive, you can see at the moment that's how much movement it takes to go across the screen. But I could flick this little button here and say flick up to it's like five things that are lit up there. That's way too fast for me, so I'll go back to a couple. You'll also be hearing when I click like this, you can hear a clicking noise. That's not actually a physical click, it's actually a, a little speaker inside it on a circuit. And you can change that by uh, press holding down, I think the way I do it is hold down that button, press down that button, one, two, and something lights up, remote that, and then we can take the click noise more or less or off altogether. But I'll, I'll leave it on because it, it sounds quite nice. There we are. And on the other way on, you can adjust how sensitive this thing in terms of when you are clicking by holding down that button and going one, two, and that will eventually go up. And then again, you can affect the sensitivity of how you would, uh, much force you put on to actually click the bar. But uh, overall, this I think is a very successful experiment. I, I like the roller mouse red. I have the impression that if this was the first ever way we'd had of controlling a cursor on screen other than using cursor arrows, we would actually have stuck with this. If this had been built into keyboards 40 years ago, we'd never probably have developed the rodent. But of course we did, and things have gone in a different direction. Over the years, if I've learned anything about computing and ergonomics, 
it's that you'll often have to make radical changes to rethink something entirely in order to deliver an enhanced user experience. And as we've seen in this video, the uh, Roller Mouse Red is a radically different take on the mouse. We're using a completely different method of uh, controlling our cursor on screen. And they've managed to do this with a great deal of quality and a great deal of style. But now that's it for another video, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.